this computer. Okay, so today's titles, job searching and marketing yourself, which I think I'm quite qualified uh, to talk about uh, because um, for many years, I was doing consulting, corp to corp consulting. So I have my own company and I worked with many uh, Wall Street companies, the biggest ones like uh, Goldman Sachs, or JP Morgan, it was three times, uh, Morgan Stanley was two times. Oh, CT, some hedge funds, uh, Credit Suisse for Boston, HSBC, whatever. So lots, I have a long resume. And uh, as a consultant, you need to learn to get up on your feet fast after your project suddenly ends and there is no security in consulting job. So <clears throat> here is some uh, main things. So first of all, there is no stability and it's not just for consulting. It's uh, even uh, full-time jobs. Uh, the average duration in the country was less than two years for a long time. You can Google for these statistics. It, it depends on different areas, but yeah, you, you should like, I remember like maybe 50 or 100 years ago, you would go to school, get a profession and then work at the same place for all your life. Well, it doesn't work anymore, right? So you have to change, you have to jump. And uh, uh, the technologies change fast. You need to learn new stuff to be marketable. You have to change to adapt, to educate yourself into employment. So this is probably the main statement. You have to educate yourself into employment. Okay, you need to be on the front of the wave. So here's the gentleman riding the wave uh, to receive a high rate salary. Because what happens with all new technologies, just a few years later, they become common, they become commodity, prices go down, and uh, the market become, job market becomes more competitive. And uh, you don't want to be uh, selling yourself in a commoditized market, right? Uh, so you want to be ahead of the wave, on the front of the wave. Most people don't educate themselves until they are forced to, to do so. Like the employer tells them, well, you have to go take this course, blah, blah, blah. When you're in this position, you're already late. Uh, you're not in front, you're behind. <clears throat> so what's happening with these employees? Yes, they educate themselves, uh, but uh, the employer will not increase their salary. And if they don't educate themselves, they will be fired. Um, and the effective compensation may go down because of uh, competition, because of inflation and, and so on. So unless you educate yourself in advance, in advance of uh, most of other people, uh, you'll get screwed, right? So uh, nowadays you also have to compete against remote outsourcing either to other countries, to people, or against outsourcing to computers, which is a real thing. Automation, cloud, AI. Many jobs become extinct. And this is true, especially like for my heart as financial companies, I remember going uh, to the floors with traders and uh, they were very busy with hundreds of people. And now literally like out of 600 people, you may have like five or maybe even less because everything is automated and uh, yeah, these this, this are amazing changes which is happening. Uh, tactics and strategy. So strategy is a long-term several years direction, a vision, and tactics is a short-term specific paying bills this month, right? So people tend to concentrate on tactics and not setting long-term strategic, strategic direction for their career. Uh, can you please mute yourself? Please mute yourself. Uh, people tend to overestimate what they can do short term in three months and underestimate what they can achieve long term, three, five, ten years. So what I recommend, uh, everybody recommends that, is to set strategic direction. For me, it's new technologies like data science, machine learning, AI, uh, crypto. Once you decide it on your strategic direction, you need to find examples of people who can use as role models. Because the easiest way to achieve success is to follow someone else's steps. Uh, venturing in a new field is like stepping into a minefield. You don't know where the mines are, very easy to be killed. But you have someone who knows how to cross this minefield. 
then you can repeat his success simply by following in, in his steps. Okay, educate yourself. Some knowledge uh, you can find by searching, Googling for it. For some knowledge you should pay, but uh, it's all good investment, time and, and money. Um, I really like this example, uh, Prashant Reddy. Uh, this is amazing guy. And uh, I first uh, met him, he probably doesn't know who I am, but I met him at Morgan Stanley in the year 2000. And uh, amazingly talented. And uh, he made great career at Morgan Stanley. And then, and this is interesting. So he was on a high uh, level position earning six figure income and he dropped. Uh, from Morgan Stanley, and he uh, has become a PhD student in Carnegie Mellon. And uh, he shifted into machine learning. And after that, he got a job at Google and later at JP Morgan. So he is now uh, the main architect for some of the ML AI technologies at JP Morgan. A really amazing guy. But this is a very interesting example of selecting and staying on strategic course. So he selected machine learning as strategic course and he sacrificed a lot of money to achieve this goal. So this is a very good example, I think. Educate yourself in advance, be proactive. So uh, uh, when you educating proactive, you a little bit ahead of the crowd, but because even the little bit ahead, you will have little or no competition and you will receive higher salary. This is really amazing how it works. So this is, let's say this is your college, right? And it has four years of education, right? If you learn two weeks in advance, you always get higher grades, you're ahead of the uh, crowd, you get good recommendation, you get good job, everything is good. If you learn two weeks late, you're always late with your exams, you're failing them, you're getting low grades, and then you, not getting good jobs, right? Over a period of two or four years of college, the shift is only two weeks. It actually should be maybe one week and one week, like my math is off. Whatever, it's about 1%, let's say two weeks, 2%. But uh, still, it's a very, very small shift, but it's huge shift if you compare the results. So you just shift left or right and completely different results. So 1% shift in timing results in 100 to 500 shift in salary in real life. And this is true, this is how it works. Okay, uh, catch 22, right? Can get hired without experience and can get experience without a job, right? So you have to break out of this loop and you always have this loop. Every time you go for the interview, you are in this loop because even if you highly experienced still every company is different the technologies are different the situation is different you will not fit precisely never uh, and uh, well you you can either get some real experience in exactly what they need which again is catch 22 maybe you do some pro bono free work or you just sell your enthusiasm. So you get some education and then you convince them that you're really excited and you can do the job. And this is psychology and you should understand uh, the poor hiring manager. He has a problem and especially with new technology, he has difficulty finding uh, somebody on this job. And if you come and you just have enthusiasm, uh, they may hire you right there. Okay, uh, because, uh, well, yes, it's a bet, uh, but it may work. And uh, especially with new technologies, it's, it's much easier to get the job this way. So stop studying, start interviewing. Again, very simple idea and very powerful. So I had a friend who always felt that he needed to study more to get more courses, more certifications, but he was not going on interviews and he was not getting jobs. Uh, so suppose you already started and you already have some knowledge. So let's say you are 70% ready. If you study for another three months, let's say you'll be 75% ready because you will never be 100% ready, right? Uh, so more studying will only increase it like 5%. But if you instead will start going on the interviews and it's just numbers game, 
uh, it, it will be a huge increase in, in your results. So please, please, please don't try to be 100%. Be good enough and go on the interviews. I knew another guy who was absolutely useless at work. And I mean it, absolutely useless. But he was complaining that he's not paid enough. So he was constantly going on interviews, uh, putting on a nice suit and shirt and uh, resume and talking to everybody how good he is. Trust me, he wasn't good. And he was getting those high paid jobs. <laughs> so uh, it's, it, it's very interesting. So I really recommend to go on the interviews. That's for most people, it's a bottleneck. People are afraid. Uh, it's a personal thing. They're afraid that uh, people will um, think bad about them and so on. Just go, just fail. A lot of interviews. Those who study don't get jobs. Those who go on interviews get jobs and earn more. Uh, note that once you get a job, you will learn new stuff, but you at the same time, you will be paid for this, right? So don't procrastinate, start interviewing. So bottleneck is usually not in your incomplete knowledge. Nobody's perfect. Bottleneck is usually is not doing enough marketing, selling, and interviewing. So interviewing, interviewing, interviewing. Interview is not a test, but an educational session. Well, interview is a lot of things, uh, but I really like to go on interviews because for me, it's really education. Um, it may be, especially like when you're just starting interviewing after some period of not interviewing, uh, you may be forgot how to do it, right? Uh, so you need to go, go to prepare to warm up. Um, also, on the interview, you're talking to some managers who usually, well, high paid people and uh, they're in certain area, they have certain plans and that's why they want to hire you. And they tell you what they need you for and what kind of technologies and what kind of problems they're solving and so on. And what I usually do, I take out my uh, paper uh, notepad and I start writing and asking them questions. So it's really, for me, it's like a lesson. And then I go home and I google all these keywords or subjects and uh, i maybe change my resume and linkedin uh, i definitely learn something on every interview i go to so i highly recommend so it's a free education with experienced high-paid professionals right so it's it's a good thing so go on the interviews okay this slide is probably one of the most important slides in the whole presentation uh, Charlie McCullough, I love this guy. We were friends. He, uh, it was back in uh, about 20 years ago. I was at Goldman Sachs, and Charlie was, I think, was in Atlanta, Georgia, and he was a consultant. He was flying uh, and uh, working during the week, and then flying back. Uh, so I only found his photograph from obituaries. Uh, unfortunately, it was I, I owe him a lot. Uh, simply because of his experience and wisdom. So he was a database administrator. It's kind of standard job, right? Uh, you wouldn't expect database administrator to be paid $300 an hour. I was paid $115 an hour, and it was uh, above average. Uh, mostly uh, at Goldman back then, people were paid about 100 an hour. And Charlie was paid three times more. It's amazing. I met him one evening when he was going from New York Sports Club and I was going to Subway. So we had a couple blocks to go and we were out of the office and I asked him something about his personal stuff and uh, exercising and travel and uh, payment. And he told me, I, I mean, usually you're not supposed to ask how, how much people are making, but we both were consultants. We both were kind of external. And he told me his numbers. And I couldn't believe it. I absolutely couldn't believe it. I said, Charlie, how you do it? Why, why the company is paying you 300 when they're paying 100 to everybody else? And it's a big company. They have standards, right? They have HR. They have like whatever. Uh, usually it's very difficult to convince those bureaucrats to pay more to one person. It's a matter of policy. And he asked me a question. He said, well, what do you think is your most highly paid skill and i said well well it's of course my technical skills right and uh, uh, my education math or whatever 
have good education? And he said, no, no, technical skills, everybody have technical skills. Your most highly paid skill is your enthusiasm. And I said, what? Like, this makes absolutely no sense. And later, not later, but maybe in parallel, I, uh, I got the book, which is called How I Raised Myself from Failure to Success in Selling uh, by Frank Badger. So it's about 1930s. It's an old book. It's a very famous book. And he was describing there how he's doing selling, face-to-face uh, -face selling. He was a life insurance salesperson. And nobody likes to buy life insurance. And nobody wants to experience pressure from salespeople and so on. And he built a very successful practice. And in this book, he explains, and in some other books, and he talks about enthusiasm as a main factor of success. So when you on the interview and you're talking to somebody, uh, really what matters is your energy, your positive energy, your confidence. Uh, your enthusiasm about whatever technology, position, company. And uh, yes, I, I, I've seen it myself. So you have to somehow prepare yourself for the interview, maybe to become a different person. Um, Frank Badger describes uh, in his young years, he was playing baseball and he was fired from uh, the team because uh, his coach told him oh, that he was lazy. And then he got a position at another team in another city, he, a town, he went there and uh, he said, okay, I'll pretend that I'm not lazy. I'll be very energetic, I'll be running all the time, <laughs> trying, like I can do it for a couple hours, whatever. And this changed his life. Uh, he was written about, uh, he started receiving 10 times more money and so on, so on. Although for him, it was just a theater. He didn't change, but he was just projecting this energy. He was behaving as is. So interview is kind of like that. It's uh, it's a theater, it's projection of energy. Um, another thing is smile, uh, be positive, feel good. I, I recently spoke to a person and she told me that she recently went on about 40 interviews, uh, mostly with recruiters and nothing. And I spoke with her, we spoke about some other stuff, but I told her, listen, do you realize that in half an hour we were talking, you haven't smiled even once. So you, she was not projecting the happiness, the fascination for life or whatever. She was not a cheerleader. Um, so here I, I write some stuff, which I think is very, very important on the interview. So smile, be positive, feel good. If you feel good about yourself, uh, you will relax and you will relax your interviewer. Even if you don't know some answers to the question, it doesn't matter. But your, like, your positive attitude is very important. Be attentive and supporting listener. Be a cheerleader for the other person. So he's saying something and saying, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, whatever, you communicating, maybe even without saying much. Uh, be a cheerleader, be happy and relaxed, radiate bubbling positive energy. Okay, so try. Uh, build trust, be authentic, be excited and curious about the person, about technology, project, company, and so on. So I tried to find a picture and I found this picture to represent it. <laughs> Who you should become when you are on the interview. Okay, it is much easier to pass the interview for new technologies. Well, yes, this is true. The older the technology, the stronger the competition, the more detailed and difficult is the interview, uh, really difficult. For a new technology, you can pass interview simply talking in general terms. And if, if you're excited about the area, you can get fired without even knowing any technical details at all. So uh, managers need a specialist in new technology. They have a problem headache, which they cannot resolve themselves. They don't know this technology themselves and they have difficulty finding specialists, right? This is the situation. And sometimes if you just demonstrate that you're excited, it will be enough, you will get hired. I already spoke with this at the beginning of the presentation, but this is very true. And if you know the, some basics, uh, some like you have a dictionary of words, of keywords in this area, and you just know the answers. Like for example, for machine learning, 
you would know, okay, what is machine learning? What is data science? What is supervised learning? What is this? What is that? What is, usually ask what is precision? What is recall? If you know the most commonly used keywords, you golden, the chances are very high. So here's the formula, do research, find new and in high demand skills, right? Learn basics, terminology, dictionary to be able to answer basic questions. It usually takes no more than maybe one, two months. And then just go on the interviews. And then when you get a job, after three months on a new job, you will have experience, you'll be ready. Okay, you cannot move forward while looking back. So uh, some people uh, define themselves by their school, by their college. But of course, you understand that because jobs uh, change every couple of years, technologies change every couple of years, you have to constantly learn and forget about who you were in, in college, right? Uh, in fact, if both uh, you and I today, uh, maybe I have more knowledge in machine learning and other stuff, but in three years from now, it will be the same because in these three years, everything will change. So you absolutely can catch up with me and, and with anybody else. Uh, so do not try to grow incrementally from your previous experience. Rather, make your research, find what is needed, and pull yourself to it. So that's why I made this pull-up uh, picture. Uh, most people define themselves by their prior experience, and this is a huge mistake. Uh, progress is disruptive. In order to make space for new stuff, you need to get rid of old stuff. So me, uh, for me, historically, it was a difficult decision because originally I come from science. I come from many years of education and uh, working on the thesis and uh, scientific publications and research lab. And, and I had to put all this behind me and like it's absolutely not relative, uh, not rel relating to what I want to do and uh, just concentrate on what I want to accomplish today and educate myself into this new area. Uh, the good thing is that usually it takes just two, three months to educate yourself in the new area. It's not difficult. I've done it multiple times. And just uh, you shouldn't be afraid. You don't need to go to college for that. You don't need to pay a lot of money to some courses. Everything is available for free on the Internet. Uh, you don't need to become a true experienced specialist. You just need to become a reporter who knows about the subject, can navigate terminology and can demonstrate uh, excitement. That's really what's uh, so here is you, and you can either try to do something disruptive and pull yourself into new stuff, or you can incrementally grow from like your old historic stuff, which uh, maybe feels safer, but it goes nowhere. You, you really have to be a brave person and pull yourself to some new stuff. So disruption is the key. I, I actually had a different set of pictures here. I had like you in the fork of the road and on the left is a pile of shit and on the right is pile of diamonds and you have to make a decision and pile of diamonds is uh, scary like sh sh shining too bright and pile of shit of course is very familiar and warm and you select pile of shit so that's uh, bad thinking right so you need to go for diamonds you need to go for scary stuff and uh, mostly what i see it's not that scary and just two, three months, and you already can navigate it pretty easily. Okay, uh, market yourself by your positioning, not by chasing opportunities. So if you package yourself uh, using your LinkedIn, uh, maybe, uh, uh, of course, your resume as an obvious expert. So when people look at your bio, you say, oh, of course, he's an expert. So there is a good book you can buy on Amazon, the obvious expert. And you can do a lot of stuff. You can do posts and articles or even books. You can do YouTube videos, podcasts, other social media, LinkedIn posts, articles, maybe make some courses, uh, conferences, presentations, uh, make good GitHub, personal website, and so on. Most people never do that. Most people never do that. So by doing this, you immediately put yourself in a really, really small uh, percentage. And you are way ahead of competition. And um, what I've seen is also when you get a job, you get higher pay, not just you get the job, but you're paid more because you position yourself better. So uh, you like have a price sticker on, on yourself. It's not like price sticker, but 
just you package so beautifully that people just cannot even think to offer you a low salary. Um, teaching others is a great way to educate yourself, become an educator, an evangelist of the new stuff. And then, of course, people will think, oh, he educates it. He, uh, like he teaches others, so of course he knows this stuff. It is easier to learn new stuff together with somebody. Uh, so like, for example, this uh, seminar, right? Uh, we can learn stuff together. You can have just one person, a partner, and work with him or her. Making presentation, I really believe it's a good way to learn stuff. Uh, and you can publish them as a website, blog, and so on. OK, so position yourself as an obvious expert. Uh, time management, marketing funnel. OK, uh, people usually don't want to think about it. Uh, but here on the right, uh, this is not my idea of the, you see this, no, 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 and then one yes, right? This is kind of the job search. Uh, a lot of no's, well, not that many in reality, definitely not for me, but uh, uh, there is a lot of no's, right? And uh, so suppose you, you put yourself on the market and uh, let's say N1 people found you. Like a lot of people found you, but they're not interested maybe. And then some people contacted you. So this will be N2, much smaller number. And then uh, some people submitted you for a job, even smaller number. And then some of these uh, jobs uh, decided to invite you for the interview and then maybe invited you to the second interview and then eventually uh, offer you a job, right? So it's a funnel. It's not, the sizes are not uh, correct because uh, the probability, for example, of after being submitted uh, to be invited, uh, well, it may be small. Like for example, we uh, received uh, 250 applications for internship and we interviewed maybe only 10 of those. And then from uh, 10 interviewed, uh, we selected three, right? And this was not really serious because it was just low paid interns. For real positions, there is a fierce competition. Uh, so uh, you need the N1 number to be big enough uh, so that after all this reducing, you get uh, a job, right? And people are usually not doing that. They just don't do things massively enough. They hope that it will happen magically. And no, it will not happen. Like you need to be realistic and you need to make a, a, a funnel, marketing funnel like that. And um, well, the good thing is that this massive uh, first stages, you can automate them, right? Uh, all you need to do is uh, uh, use internet for that. So you can make, uh, uh, posts and what I was telling about obvious expert and how you position and publish yourself and just uh, let people to subscribe to you or to, to contact you and, and so on and so on. Uh, okay, uh, so majority of your time will be spent in N1 and 3. And again, people usually try to spend time here because they already spoke with somebody and they hope that it will go through. And the chances of it going through is very small. What you need to do, you need to constantly work on N1 and 2 and 3, which is where you get most of the no's. So no, no, no. Every day you're getting no, every day you're getting no, nothing is happening. But you still need to massively, massively pull things into your marketing funnel. So this, this is the key. OK. To look for a job is a full-time job in itself. And some people don't realize that. Well, to look for a job is a professional occupation, right? There are books on how to do it. Uh, you can go to Barnes & Noble or whatever, and uh, I don't know if Barnes & Nobles exist anymore. And, uh, but um, I, I remember going and I saw bookshelves filled with uh, books about job search. You, you, you just go on, uh, uh, I don't know, Amazon. Oh, I, I did it actually. Search for job search on Amazon returns more than 10,000 results. So it's a lot of books on job search. You don't need to read all of them. You just need to read at least like one or two. Um, I recommend a couple of books uh, late in this presentation. 
but you need to educate yourself. If you don't know what you're doing, how you expect to uh, get, get the result? Uh, I usually give this example. So suppose you need to undergo brain surgery and you find that your surgeon hasn't uh, read even a single book about medicine. So you probably don't want the surgeon to work on you. And how can you possibly become successful in finding jobs if you never read books, never compared different strategies? Like if you're doing something, how do you know it's effective way of looking for a job? Uh, you don't need to be a superhero to find a job. You just need to follow certain proven steps. You need to know what these steps are and you need to be effective and uh, doing them. So it's, uh, it's kind of professional skill to know how to find a job and it's about time management. Okay, here are a couple of things I recommend. So one is uh, what color is your parachute? So this book was published since 1970 and it was revised every year since 1975. Um, this is um, a absolutely amazing book. And what the author does in this book, he compares different things people are doing in their job search and tactics, of course, change because, you know, 20 years ago, people were uh, buying uh, Sunday New York Times. I was doing this and uh, uh, calling on the ads and so on. Nowadays, people use LinkedIn, people use internet and, and, and so on. Uh, tactics change and you need to know what to do and how to do it. So I highly recommend this book. Uh, it's also available in audio. I Frankly, I consumed it in audio because it's thick. Uh, I also really recommend these two guys, Joe Polish and Dean Jackson. Uh, they have a podcast called I Love Marketing. ilovemarketing.com is a website. So there's a couple of links uh, to follow. Okay, uh, your resume and your LinkedIn profile. This is actually my LinkedIn profile, the top of it. And this is my resume, it's two pages. It used to be more than 10 pages and then I cut it. Uh, and uh, uh, because nobody wants to read the lengthy resume. Some people say your, your resume should be just one page, um, but you absolutely uh, need to have uh, both and you need them to correspond to each other. Uh, very important to have summary on the top, title and summary. So here you see my title, data science, machine learning, artificial intelligence, analytics, expert leadership, uh, team builder, manager. So these are, the keywords which describing myself and describing who I want to be on a new job. And uh, people find me because the way a LinkedIn search algorithm works, it looks at the title and then it looks at the summary. And summary also is filled with keywords related to what I can bring to the table. So 90% of what you do uh, should be about your title and about your summary so that people will find you. Because unless they find you, they cannot even consider you, right? Uh, so this, this is a very important part. Okay, uh, self-fulfilling prophecy. Give yourself a title that corresponds to what you want to become. Uh, people want to become data scientists and I tell them, okay, uh, put your title here, like put that you are a data scientist. And they say, no, but I'm not data scientist yet. I don't know machine learning. I don't know Python, whatever. I say, no, you put it first. And then what will happen, some magic, you will pull yourself to correspond to this title. But you need to like, start calling yourself data scientist. Yeah, so this is my uh, uh, title. Uh, convince yourself that you are a data scientist. Because, well, if you ask, what does it mean to be a data scientist? It doesn't mean uh, to have a college degree. I just recently watched a good video where a um, trainer, data science trainer and YouTuber, she was saying, well, you don't need college degree anymore uh, on the market, on the job market, even for data science, you don't need a college degree anymore. It's really interesting. So minimalistic definition of a data scientist, okay, you need to be able to get data, SQL, CSV file, Excel file, 
you need to explore the data, Excel, Jupyter Notebook, and so on. You need to be able to run some simple models like linear regression, logistic regression, or something. You need to be able to evaluate model quality, accuracy, confusion matrix, precision, recall, or a C curve, and so on. You need to be able to make presentations, PowerPoint presentations, and deliver them. Right? It's very important. And uh, there are multiple projects on GitHub, Medium. And so you can take some of them, uh, create uh, Jupyter Notebooks, uh, Python scripts, create PowerPoint presentations, present them to, I don't know, your family members, and done. You are a minimalistic data scientist. Okay? Just do that. Uh, writing your experience in resume and LinkedIn. Well, uh, one is you need to customize your URL because uh, by default, it comes with some gibberish numbers at the end. You can remove them. And instead of name, you can do something else. Like I could have done left selector data scientist or, like, or simply data scientist one, two, three or something. I don't know. Um, in my case, it's a name, but you can modify it. Use active language of achievement when talking about your experience. I have designed, I built, trained, increased, improved, proposed, and so on. You need to demonstrate accomplishments, achievements. Include keywords on which you want people to find you when they do search on LinkedIn. Well, I already spoke about this, especially in your title and summary on the top of your LinkedIn profile and resume. Okay, get recommendations for your LinkedIn profile. Well, when you're on Amazon, so here, for example, the book, a bright line eating the science of living happy and three so you see it's almost uh, five stars and it's almost seven thousand ratings wow that's amazing that means it's a really really good book right so uh probably even like whatever you should buy it and and actually this is a very good book um, so um same is on uh, LinkedIn with your recommendations. So this is copy from my screen yesterday. I have 56 recommendations on my profile, right? Uh, I don't know what's the average on LinkedIn, how many recommendations people have, but um, I've seen like zero or very few. So if you have a lot of positive recommendations, of course you stand out. It's like people have confidence in hiring you because you have a lot of positive feedback about you. Okay, so get recommendations, at least 510 to start with. Uh, people trust when they see positive reviews, similar to experience on Amazon. Okay, so position yourself as a five-star product using recommendations. Okay, and uh, to get visibility, you can do some writing, some posts. Uh, posts uh, don't have to be original, you can repost and just copy paste some links, just say something, oh, uh, I just saw this, this is very interesting. Uh, yeah. What I recommend uh, actually to put it in order is to maybe make a file and just think about 10, 20 topics you want to talk about, and then write one, two posts every week. And don't think about it as something monumental, post is something temporary. So. You can literally spend maybe five, 10 minutes uh, to, to write a post, maybe Google for some picture, especially good to have a picture with some animation. Uh, you can just find animated pictures or you can uh, make uh, animated images yourself, animated GIFs. It's not difficult. Uh, there are free websites which allow you to do it uh, quite easily. And the post, uh, you can post uh, on your profile, but you can post in different groups. On LinkedIn, you can become a member of groups related to your profession and post there from time to time. Okay, so that's that's it. This is the end of my presentation. Uh, for some reason, I don't see here. Let me uh, how I raised myself from failure to success in selling. So this book, uh, Frank Badger. I, I need to maybe to make a special page about this book, but th this is an amazing book and I really, really highly recommend to buy it. Uh, you see the new one is $9. You can buy a used one for just a couple of dollars and uh, 
uh, this is a very, very important book. Uh, if you ask me, uh, I would say this is the book uh, to know when, when you do face-to-face uh, -face selling, which is uh, what interview is, right? So please buy yourself this. Uh, of course, you can download, but I recommend to buy a paper copy. I bought this book multiple times and uh, I recommend you to do the same. Okay, uh, this is the end of the presentation. I will stop recording.